one thing, and Max taught me this, he said, get the guy off the anchor as soon as possible and then make yourself comfortable later. So you get to the anchor, you've just led this A4 pitch, you're all going, oh my God, I lived. <laughs> you know, it isn't time for you to start drinking beer and enjoying the beauty of Yosemite Valley while your buddy sits down there and does nothing, okay? Tie off the rope, get the hulk go, you know, blow off you aren't ready. Get the haul system going, pump out all the slack, get the haul bag off the anchor. Once the haul bag's off the anchor, he can start cleaning. Then you can take off your wrap, you can have some water, you can do a selfie, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So, so your haul bag comes up. These, this is my docking cord. This is the absolute best way to dock bags ever. This will never, ever hose you. Okay? If you're using like a daisy chain, you're using one of these guys, what do people do? They think this is a great idea. Companies used to tell you to use it easy. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. okay. I that when you... I was in the instruction manual. <laughs> but I watched this happen once. There was this, this lady, she had docked her bag like this, and her buddy, her, her now her husband, couldn't hear her, and so he was pulling the hall bags up like this, and she's going, Oh, give me some slack, give me some slack. And he's going, yeah, it's a beautiful day. And she's going, no, give me slack, give me slack, give me slack. So there is no way, and so she like loosened this, which did nothing, because now the bag's out over here. And so she's trying to get her back on this, but it's a real day in the pitch. Bags weigh a couple hundred pounds. You just simply can't unclip that beaner. So don't ever clip your haul bags under the beaner. It's just, it's, it, you just absolutely do not need to do it. So, my technique, so that's why I have these guys. Because I want my anchors nice and neat and clean. And so I always have, this is where I dock my haul bags. Pretty much every route I do, has, I have two haul bags. We always go with his and her haul bags. You know, I have my haul bag, you have your haul bag. So, they'll be sitting here side by side, they'll each have a docking cord. Bring it up, tie it through here, tie a munter, right? And then separate the ropes and barber pull them back and forth a few times. And then tie that off with a square knot. And then the other bag gets tied over here underneath the rope, not over this. <laughs> Yes. Because that would pin the rope in, right? Underneath the rope. This rope, notice where it is on the gate. Notice where that is. Notice where this is. I hope to see a screw mess over right there. <laughs> so that should be there. So I can get the rope out. So the rope's out. So the rope always stays closest to the gate. Don't ever clip anything here. Always, always, always clip it pat on the other side of the rope. If the shit hits the fan, you wanna, you're gonna need the rope. I mean, I guarantee you, you do it the other way, shit hits the fan, you're gonna pull out your knife and you're gonna just cut this shit away and you're gonna let it go because you need to get stuff done. And, you know, it, it might not be like he's, there's a hornet up there that, that bit him. It might be like he fell and he's gonna compound fracture his leg. You know, so this is like real life. Uh, what's the length and diameter of your docking cords that you'd like to use? Go by. Like, uh, go by 12 feet, 13 feet, 8 mil, 7 not, mil. Not that huge of you don't diameter. Need it. 8 you mil know? cord, about 13, 15 feet. Yeah, tie an 8 knot in the middle, tie it down here. So, okay, so now the other one's hanging here. Guys always go, guys go, oh, I like to get my bags really tight to the anchor. And I always go, why? You know? I mean, for one, you're tied in with a bunch of slack because you've got to move a lot to haul the bags. 
And then everyone climbs with daisies now. So although I'm tied in here, you know, maybe 20 feet away, once I finally get sort of settled, I'll clip in my daisies and I'll adjust them so I'm nice and comfortable. I'm not worried about the daisies breaking because I'm still tied into the rope and the daisies aren't going to break anyway. So, so now the beauty of this is like, okay, so I'm sitting there. He says, blow off, do you want it ready? I have my jugs on the rope. I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm just dangling here. He's starting, the bags are starting to pop. I'll untie this. And I can, you can hold the whole 200 pounds just like that with one hand. And so now he's, you know, it's going out there, or it's going, you know, I mean, you just sort of let that go, and that's go. No, you'll, you'll never screw up. I mean, this is the best way to dock your cords. You're going to be so happy when, when it just doesn't, you know, I mean, it's crazy. It's so good. Is that a PDF on your website? I do have it on my website, yeah, yeah. It, and actually, I didn't, I sort of modified this from Chongo. He had a different way, which was interesting. His, uh, his way was one cord, and I misunderstood what he was doing. And he wrapped this around like that, and then, and then he tied these, these together here. That's kind of good. But I think my way is better. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's cleaner. Um, yeah. And, and I don't safety the haul bags with the haul line, you know, because you're going to forget, and the guy's going to be pulling on the haul line. But it's so like in, in, in 2010 when I invented this, I've done 17 on cap routes since then, so however that many pitches, you know, that many nights, it's never, ever, ever, ever slipped at all or failed or anything. Um, at the very worst, you might see it. At the very worst, this might slip up like that a little bit. But it, it rarely, rarely does. And I mean, I thought it's a massive load, too. We just hauled on Genesis. We had 300 pounds. It was way too much. So that's the purpose of the two blue quick draws is to dock your right, separate hull. Right. So that's that, those are my docking beaners, and 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 on, on my real life docking kit, I have two red beaners, and those are the only things that ever get clipped. So that's my that's my anchor kit, and mine are red. You know, I mean Max has his own, and Scott has his own kind of thing. Yes. So you feel that that's more efficient than just having the single strand muntering it and muling it, and then... You know, I haven't used that method, but this, this I feel, is more idiot-proof. <laughs> um, yeah. And being an idiot, that's the way I go. Uh, although, there is, a, there is a point where if the bag uh, tightens on that mule, you're gonna have a hard time yeah. popping that okay, little loop. Okay, that, you've got a little bit more, yeah. Yeah, I've heard of guys putting a grigri on it and just wrenching on that thing. And you know, and these, yeah. you know okay. I mean, I just don't like, I, I never, don't ever do this. Take off your rack and just clip it in and just drop it. You know, I mean, I had a buddy do that once and the beaners all went to the ground. You know, I always take stuff off and I clip it on and I let it go, okay. So I don't like just, I don't like just popping stuff like that. Cool. But, uh, okay, so that's. Um, if you have to lower the bag out right? further than that distance from the anchor. Okay, so, good. So let's see. Um, okay, so that, that starts another discussion, which is great. I always tie in my haul bags with a mini trap. I always, that's how I haul all the time. Uh, people are, and this is again, people are always going, oh, you should put a, a water bottle over this. Well, again, you know. 300 and something pitches. I've never ever core shot my haul line. And if I do, who cares? Because it's right next to the end, I'll just cut it off. But if, if this is on a swivel, which I would suggest, this will immediately turn and it'll go right over the rope, right over any bulge, smooth as silk. It's really nice. The other thing is that 
I just turned 60 years old just three days ago. So I am an old fucker. Um, I don't heal, I don't recover as fast as half of you because I am far older. So for me, when you leave, when you leave the bottom of El Cap, there's only so many calories in your body, and there's only so many calories in your haul bag. And eventually, you're gonna run out of calories. So shortly after having run out of calories, you will start to die. <laughs> so we, we wanna avoid any big, any part of dying. And so if you take a haul line, and you tie an eight knot, and, uh, and you haul on this baby, this eight knot's gonna be welded when you get up to that next anchor. And so let's just say you're at the anchor and you haven't quite been doing your job, you know, you haven't been really paying attention and all of a sudden the haul line's jiggling and you realize you've got to lower the bag out. So, you know, you're trying, to, you're trying to untie this welded haul line. It's just a drag. I mean, you're chewing on it, you know, you got dentures, or maybe not. <laughs> but it ain't gonna work, you know. So with the, with the with the micro track, it's just it's ne there's never a knot. I always thread this thing wrong too the first time. All right, I don't see that's wrong. So so why not butterfly or clove hitch that? Uh, is it just too hitch, hard to close of it, close, a clove hitch is going to be even worse as far as welding itself onto the knot. A butterfly, it's going to weld itself onto the knot. You know, and I mean, you can take your hammer and sort of beat on it a little bit, but it's just it's one of those things that I don't want to spend the effort to uh, to untie that knot. So, if with the cheese saying, so like he starts to haul, I just start yarding on this guy. And I'm pulling all sorts of extra slack on that row. And so now I have a bunch of haul line over here that when this starts to grab, how safety this. I have a, on my swivel, I've got a, you know, you'll, you'll clip it into the other part of the swivel. And I'll safety it. Not to the same thing, but honestly. So in case that should fail, I mean, it never happens. But then, if, if I'm going to lower it out a lot, you could go with a winter. I don't know how to tie a winter first try. How do you do that? Well, telepath. I'll just go like that, and I'll put it in my grigri. Yep. And then just, just lower it out with the grigri, and then, you know, okay, so then hold back, you know, and let it go. Another, which brings up another tip, if, does any questions about that? It really, you know, people say, well, it's a cammed tooth on your, on your rope, um, and isn't that going to damage your rope? You know, uh, I've hauled mammoth loads and got it stuck and hauled with two to one, and you got the haul line tight like a piano, and it, it just doesn't. You know, it, it's just in my whole experience, 17 El Capri's, it hasn't. So. The other guy, the other thing people say is, some guy wrote this, he says, oh, well, I like to get my haul bags really tight to the anchor, and that just leaves too much, too much distance. I go, really? You can tie an eight knot that's less than an inch long? You know, I mean, there's no way you can do it. It just doesn't exist. What are the dimensions of your haul rope? Static? Um, seven? It's a static 70, eight, nine, or nine, or something, you know? Um, I mean, this, we can't do it. Yeah. Mark, I have, a, I have a question about lowering out. Yeah. So you're saying the guys come up to you and they say, oh, do I need a special lower out line or an extra tight line? And you're like, nah, you never need it. Right. But uh, and now when you look at, you're saying, look at the topo. So you look at the topo, but the topos don't always tell you how far out you have to go. So how do you know right, but that okay, you can so, lower out? I mean, take, take the worst possible example. Take like the... Um, the KB Traverse on Iron Hawk, which is 120 feet, and it only raises 20 feet, 40 feet. So it's almost dead horizontal, okay? So we've got 120 feet, you know, so A squared, B squared, C squared. So we've got a 200 foot rope. 
So we pull over the hull line so it's tight. So we clip in the hull bag. So the hull bag's at 120 feet. So we've got 80 feet of rope to lower the bag out with. So we lower out the bag 80 feet. And so now it's probably, it's gonna be, it's gonna be not quite 45 degrees. So, okay. So you're looking over there and going, the wall overhangs and there's nothing for miles. So why do I have to lower out the bag? Why do I care? <laughs> Cut that baby loose. Let it fly. You know, <laughs> now, now if you're on the nose and you're lowering it over into the stove legs, there's dull corner there. Okay, so now you need to be aware. You know, uh, on, on the Zodiac, um, like if you're at the nipple, I was just cutting it right loose because it just looks so cool to slit it. But what's it going to hit? <laughs> you know, is, is, is the other thing. Now, if it's going to hit something, yes, in all my experience, I did this just the other day, there's two pitches. There's only one pitch that you need a low rut line because you don't have enough because it will hit something. And that was on Native Sun. You know, it was the only place that I could figure it out. So, so again, it's that it's, it's even take it into the larger context, go, okay, so like you go to Baffin Island, I would say, we don't know nothing about Baffin Island, we better take it on the rope. Yes, totally do that, you know, because <laughs> Baffin Island, you're going to hose your ropes anyway. But yes, do that. But on the nose, on the south face, Washington Column, Leaning Tower, just go, oh, okay, let's see, let's talk to somebody. Is there a corner out on that, on the bad pitch, you know? It's sort of like... Oh, the other thing was uh, hauling on a static line versus a dynamic line because if the lead line gets cut, you're going to fall 230 feet onto a static line. You have a better chance of, di of living on a dynamic line. Yeah, 230 foot fall, you know, for one. Um, and two, how many times in the history of rock climbing has that accident happened? You know, it's happened once. So I'm not going to worry about it, you know? I mean, it, it's, it's a terrible accident. It's every climber's worst nightmare. But it's only happened once. And I'm, not, I'm just not going to worry about it. And then, you're not going to fall 230 feet on the South A and live to tell the story. I don't care where you fall on the South A. If you fall at the very top of the head wall, you'll go 230 feet and you'll live. But every other spot, you'll die. You'll hit something. So it's sort of like, I mean, it's, it's terrible. It's like that guy who fell off the nose uh, this spring, fell 200 feet and splatted right on Camp 5. Um, you know, and Camp 5 is only this wide. And if he had landed, if he had fallen out there, he would have bounced and the rope would have caught him and nothing would have happened. But he hit the ledge. You know, so, so don't do that. <laughs> But anyway, so any other? I got another one. I okay. feel like I have all the stupid questions. No, that's good. Well, this one really reveals my ignorance. So when you tie in with the ropes there, are you only doing that if you're swinging leads? Because wouldn't you have to undo all that stuff if you're, when you're, you know? You know, now the, and, and really, no, this is really good because, and, and, and I want you to get into the habit of following through the sequence. When I first started, when I was learning how to solo El Cap, and I learned in my living room, I would sit there and go, okay, the rope goes up like this, then the rope goes there, and then the, you know, the ends of the rope. So, let's say we're short fixing, you know, like you're trying to do the Zodiac in a day or something, like I did just the other day, just, you know, and did it in 30 hours. So, so Max was leading, he's over here, he pulls up all the rope so that he has slack over there, he ties in an anchor, okay? So he's short fixing. Well, okay, so, okay, so you're not talking short yeah, fixing. Yeah, can you make you're it simpler for me? Yeah, leading <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. Right. Leading everything and oh yeah, if off. I'm leading everything and we're not, and we're not, you know, the other thing you could, you could easily, you get two daisies, you know, like these daisies here are worth 1,500 pounds, five kn. The kn is 250 pounds, so that's, so that's 1,200 pounds. So if you're clipped into a into you're, both of these, you're saying you tether on that, then swap ends. I would untie and just swap ends. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, even the metolius that they say are rated only 300 pounds each, which you know they're not. What's going to happen? You know, I mean, there's, if you're just sitting here like this and you slip off this hold, oh, you're not going to generate 
300 pounds mm -hmm. on both of them. You know, so no, I would just change ends. I mean, you could all freak that out. But, uh, but no, all that stuff. Those are all very good questions, and it's and that's exactly what you should be sitting down there with your partner going, okay. I want to lead this pitch, but then you should lead these next two pitches. How should we do the rope? And get that figured out right now. You know, which so that